Ooh, I'm pretty excited about this. This is a 2007 Subaru Outback XT. This thing is bone stock. This is an automatic stock intake, stock exhaust, stock downpipe, stock turbo, stock intercooler, stock fuel system. It's stock. What's that mean? Why does that get me excited? Well, it gets me excited because you don't get a lot of these. Most of the cars we tune are pretty heavily modified. And so seeing one that's totally stock gives you the opportunity to kind of logic check yourself in a lot of areas, as well as show off some of the features of the factory SI drive. What it actually does, here it is right here. This is the SI drive. It's just a little button that changes what? A lot of people don't quite realize what it actually changes. So we're gonna go into that in today's Taco Tech Tip Tuesday. Also, I got a sweet new mask from Mac Tools. Whoops, turbo mask. I can't wear my glasses with it because they fog too bad. In fact, this mask fits me terribly, but it's got a turbo on it, so it's pretty cool. So we pulled the image off this uh, 2007 Outback XT and it does ID as a legacy GT, which I assumed it would. Um, Subaru didn't specifically pull this out as its own thing, but we just double checked, made sure it is a stock tune file. And what I want to kind of focus on here is what's across the top. And this is a requested torque value. Now, this isn't like the Fords and some of the newer Chevys where this number needs to be a representation of the actual torque that the vehicle is making. But it is important to note that when you look at this table, that this is a, a boost table. So this is our target boost. And when we look at our target wastegate positions, we also have that same requested torque. So we have a similar axis here on the wastegate targets and the boost targets. And then when we come down to our actual throttle, so too far, went too far. And what we're doing is I'm gonna show you the relationship here on the SI drive of what they've got. So here we have our drive-by-wire throttle, which is, it says electronic throttle control in this car. And we have different requested torque tables and different target throttle tables for sport, sport sharp, and intelligent. So when we look here, we can see in our requested torque for sport, our maximum requested torque is gonna be 350. Sport sharp looks the same but not quite. So you can see our maximum numbers are the same, but you go to the next row over at 95% throttle, because this is accelerator pedal angle, we're requesting a lot more torque in Sport Sharp than in Sport. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna ramp the throttle in faster. If we go over to the I mode, you can see we're much lower numbers. So if we look at the actual throttle pedal correlation, um, the target throttle pedals are based on cruise, non-cruise, which is uh, the tumble generator valves open or closed, and then maximum. So maximum, obviously, we're gonna see some big numbers here. But in our actual like, cruise, non-cruise. So you can see, it doesn't take a lot of torque to get to 100% throttle, you see, but you need at least 333% to get to 100 through 2800, 3200, and so on. So that's kind of what the relationship is between the tables to the actual accelerator pedal, but that's not really what we're looking at. What we're gonna see is that's gonna change the pedal feel. In fact, you can see when you change the modes on the dash, All right, so there's the little indicator there. I mode has got the lowest. And then, let's see if we can get to go to Sport. Sport is gonna be a little bit higher, and Sport Sharp is gonna have, see how it ramps. Woo! That's their kind of like little just indication of, of how it works. But that is the accelerator feel, which is gonna change how the car feels, but it's not actually gonna make it faster. So, one big misconception that a lot of people don't quite understand is that changing the modes doesn't actually change the horsepower output 
of the car when it's factory. Okay, so we have back-to-back -back poles here on sport mode and red and sport sharp in blue. Now it made a whopping two more horsepower, well, 1.1 1, 1. 1 more horsepower in, uh, in sport sharp mode. And the reason why that is is actually just a little bit more heat. You can see it spooled a little bit sooner in sport sharp as well. Um, and that's just because the, the manifolds were hotter. But you can see peak power, peak torque, very, very similar. So there's no change in power between the two different modes. The air-fuel ratio, super lean, and then it enriches because it's a factory map and that's what they do, even though it's stupid. Um, boosts, almost identical, 0.1 pound different peak boost, 15.96 out by red line. We're clear down here into the 11s. Um, yeah, that's the... That's a stock 2007 Outback XT for you. Not even, like I said, not even 200 horsepower. Um, we will see if we can pick up some power and get this thing up to 200 horsepower. But this is pretty much what I expected. Um, power is not super flat and smooth. You know, they're just, they're pretty slow out of the box to be totally honest. Um, but I'm also going to show you, I'm not really so worried about horsepower in this video, what we can do with SI drive. So I've shown you that SI drive doesn't change anything for final power. Definitely, dyno doesn't lie. But maybe, just maybe, it actually can. So now I've reworked this, was the requested torque on the top and then boost pressure target. So we're a stock car, so we don't want to target a whole bunch of boost. But what I've done is I've reworked this top number. So now, as the car is requesting 350 foot-pounds of torque, which it does from these drive-by-wire maps in, say, Sport, Sport Sharp, see we're going 350, 350, it's gonna be shooting for about 14 pounds. And I'll change this curve. If we can't hit 14 pounds up top, I don't wanna target that. But we're gonna put this in for the initial part of the tune. Now, so that was in Sport, we want that, about 14 pounds. But Sport Sharp, we want to hit about 16 pounds. So how do we make Sport Sharp hit 16 pounds? Well, we can go in and change these 350s here to 390s. And now, when we're wide open throttle 100%, we can target and hit potentially, whoops, <laughs> I screwed that up royally. Sorry, rewind, we're gonna go back to this table. Here we go. 390, so Sport Sharp, again. We're now in Sport Sharp targeting this top row here. And then we could say down here at 95% throttle, we want that three, we'll actually do like 380. And then up here we'll do three, we'll do 350. And then we'll do 370. So if we're not quite wide open throttle now, our boost target will be here. If we're wide open throttle, our boost target will be there. So see what we've just done is we've changed, even though we haven't really changed the curve of the throttle, the throttle's still gonna feel the same. We've changed the overall power target. So now Sport Sharp, in fact, I'm gonna change this to like 16.1, that way it actually reads 16. Um, so now our targets are going to be a higher amount of boost. So, the next thing we have to do is take that same scale that we just made for target boost and put it over here into the wastegate duty cycle. Now this one you can see they start at very different values, so we'll actually just kind of work our way back. Anyway, as you can see, this is kind of how it's all gonna come together. See, so now, as we're shooting for these particular rows, or sorry, these particular columns in the, in the boost target, it's gonna work through, and if we're targeting 350, like we were in sport mode, it's gonna come down here and target the 350 column. So this is the work through. So we already know that these numbers here get us a whopping 15.4 pounds, which is pretty close to what we want. Maybe just a hair less down low. Less boost, oh, less boost. So here where it's this 47, we're gonna bring that down to 45. We'll 
leave that alone. And then up here, oops, actually, before this was the 350 column. So we're gonna go ahead and copy that column over here to this column. And then we're gonna bring it down a little bit. There we go. And then we'll just start this column with like 10 more just to start it and see what we get. So add to data, so there we go. So this is how we're gonna start for our, for our test here. We're also going to go in and I'm gonna change some other stuff in the tune, but this is the boost targets and I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of the tune sorted out and then I'll show you what this does. So immediately it becomes apparent why we tune these things. Picked up 20 horsepower on the same boost level just by not running such a pig ridge ratio up top and then a slight modification to the ignition timing but actually not a lot um, we're running pretty similar timing it's just when you're so rich down in the tenos it just chokes everything out um, i'm making a slight amount more boost just probably because it's a little bit leaner uh, a little bit more heat but anyway so there's 20 horse and that was on sport now like I said, we have our Sport Sharp, which should get us even a little bit more. So not a huge power difference just because we're not finished with the tune, but the, the thing that I wanted to show you is primarily, well, we're not finished with the tune and honestly we probably won't make a ton of top end on this. We did pick up 20 foot pounds of torque and a little bit more boost. So you can see our boost here at the bottom. So air fuel, it's identical. In fact, we're just gonna get rid of that for the sake of what we're trying to show here. And just go to boost and horsepower and torque so you can see we made more boost and we didn't change anything in the tune all we did was went and turned this dial from sport to sport sharp and that allowed the car to target more boost and then to send the wastegate position to get a little bit more boost uh, we do want to see if we can get a little bit more out the top here and then i actually want to come in for the sake of a dramatic difference and take a little bit of boost out of the sport mode so that sport will be a little bit less and sport sharp will be a little bit more. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get the timing all dialed in and everything. But that's what I wanted to show you was the difference in the way that we essentially use the wastegate target position and boost control and boost target based on this requested torque value. So it's pretty cool what we can do with the tune. This is what Cobb does in their off-the-shelf maps um, when they say multi-boost. So anything that has SI drive, we call it multi-boost because it lets us give multiple boost targets even though the factory didn't do that. So here we are, final numbers. Um, like I said, peak power, there's not a big difference. We did get a little bit more boost out the top, but it's not really making any power because of heat and restrictions and flow uh, because it is a stock exhaust, but a pretty good amount of torque throughout the power band from the Sport Sharp map versus the Sport map. So there you go. And air fuel, I just shrunk it down, but it's, it's the same. Anyway, a couple pounds more boost, a couple, you know, 22 foot-pounds more peak torque, but just in general carrying it a lot better and the horsepower Difference, I mean you've got this is 17 horsepower through most of the power band You don't typically drive these cars up around 55,000 6,000 rpms anyway um, at least these automatic Legacies and outbacks. So there you go. There is a remap sport versus sport sharp multi-boost car I know the power numbers are kind of sad but that's what these do with stock parts on this Legacy GT or Outback XT. 
Anyway, we're gonna go drive this car, make sure everything drives good, and feel the difference in Sport versus Sport Sharp. Last real quick thing I wanted to show. This was in green, the stock pull on this car. And in blue, we have our final numbers. So, oops, let me, let me clear all this crap out of here. All right, here we go. We'll do red for the original and blue for the final. Talk about a power difference, 50 horsepower, 73 foot-pounds of torque. This is just a tune. You can't bolt a part onto your car for less than many thousands of dollars to get you those kinds of gains. I'm sorry, it just doesn't exist. A tune is the best performance mod you can do to your car as far as horsepower is concerned. Tires are the best performance mod you can do to your car as far as handling is concerned. But horsepower, that's a massive difference. This will feel like a different car. But thanks for watching. And if you guys learned something, please, please be sure to subscribe. 2021 is going to be a little bit different format and I'm going to tease to that in the next couple of weeks as we have almost completed one whole year of Taco Tech Tip Tuesdays. So thanks for watching. Bye.